Welcome back, everybody. Monday morning edition. We're flying here on this hot mic. Final half hour of the show. Mention off the top. For many, the spotlight event of the Olympics began over the weekend with the track and field portion uh, underway and now will dominate uh, television for the next uh, five to six days in a way it doesn't for the sport until the next uh, four years. We turn to our resident track guy. I love this guy. He's fantastic for the sport. Stevie Keller joins us, NDSU track and field head coach. Chat about his former athlete, Peyton Otterdahl, competing in the shot. But I have a question, though, that I don't know the answer to, so I have to ask what is the the level amount of, of rain or water on the track to consider not going? I was stunned on Saturday that they the competition continued with how hard it was raining. Yeah, I was I was surprised they didn't stop it, you know, but you know, Peyton was in a good spot when it was raining yeah. before slipping and sliding. So um t- typically with the throws, they say like let the water sit in the ring because then it slows it down a little bit. You know, but there was it looked like a really slick ring and you know, I think right before that sixth round, I think it had quit raining yeah. and cleaned it up and you started to see some pretty good throws again. So I was surprised myself that they didn't just hold it off, but um, you know, it was definitely some guys slipping and sliding all over. So on the track part, Stevie, is that where it's it's basically we're worried about the athlete's health? Is that when they stop it? Because I saw they ran the 100 and, and it was still raining, right? Yeah, I mean, I think for the most part with the spikes and the surface, you know, it's a Mondo surface, which when it gets wet, it, it could be a little slippery. Maybe the jumps is a little more uh, concern there. The sprints, you shouldn't have any sliding around. So um, usually with track, it's, you know, like Coach Lars used to always say, it's an all-weather surface, so you can compete <laughs> in any weather. Uh, but, you know, there's lightning things like that. Right. They'll shut it down. Yeah, you'll kind of push through the rain, I guess. All right, so I want to start first with 100 last night. We were just visiting off air. Your kids were watching to see how packed it was, uh, which was fantastic. And I, I think a majority of us, and I'll include myself in this, when I saw the race live, I thought, okay, it looked like Thompson won, but – Many probably didn't know it's not the first body part. It's the torso that crosses first. That determines who wins in a, in a photo finish like that. Yeah, and, you know, and that's it. I mean, I was watching it, too, and I knew I knew the outcome, you know, because <laughs> I had, well, had seen it earlier. But to, to see it, I was like, wow, it doesn't look like he won. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure that, you know, like when we run meets, we have the, the finish links cameras. You have them on both sides. You might have, I mean, at the Olympics, they probably have three, four cameras on each side. So they're probably going through and they're like, okay, we're going to look from the right side. We're going to look through the left side. And, you know, it didn't take them that long, um, you know, it, but I'm, obviously they probably have a, a, a great staff that's going through those photos. Five one thousandths of a second. That's amazing that it came down to that. And the fact, and we had the photo up of basically there was just a little bit of daylight between Thompson and, and Lyles, and that's all it was for him to win the race. A, and they're, but they're taught to to finish like that, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think some people lean too early. Um, you know, Lyles looked like he kind of ran through the line and leaned, and that probably say, you know got him the gold medal. Wow. I mean, as you watch the race, as the race is going on, he's continuing to to gain ground on. I mean, if that yeah. race is another five ten meters, he probably wins pretty easily. <laughs> um, but I think that what they say was the last guy slowest reaction time was behind at twenty meters. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to see, uh, America, you know, the United States be able to take the goal in the hundreds, you know, first time since 2004. So pretty For, and, amazing. and he never led, he was never out of, he never led the race until the very end. That's remarkable to me. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool to see the fact that he ran as fast as he, as he did, like the guy who finished, I think last, did you see this stat? The guy who finished last in the hundred would have meddled in any other previous Olympics. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Some of these, you know, in the. <laughs> There's so many events on the track that, you know, like the 10K, for example, the top 13 guys yeah. broke the Olympic record, <laughs> which is just, it's, it's stupid, you know, yeah, how fast they're running. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, you're watching Peyton compete on Saturday, the emotions of this, and to have, he had a great early throw, and then basically try to wait it out, knowing the competition level he's going up against. Yeah, I mean, I thought he competed really well. Um, you know, like I think he he put a post out there. It stings a little bit, but to be fourth in the in the Olympic Games is is pretty amazing, pretty remarkable. I mean, we get so you know fixated on the top three. Um, you know, but I thought he, even when it was raining, I thought Peyton competed pretty well. You know, he, he kept his footing, had some pretty good throws. Um, you know, I think it you know just kind of came down to that last round, and yeah. you know Kawash, you knew he he's a gamer. I mean he's done that in the past, and he was able to put one out there. The Jamaican guy had a good throw early on, and just you know that's that's what it takes. 
to come down to that, la- I mean, I can't even imagine the pressure on that last. No, he knows exactly what he needs. I mean, that there's there's a ton of pressure on that. Yeah, and for him to go out and throw, you know, just off his best from yeah. the day. I mean, it was that's pretty remarkable. You know, I'm going to say a young guy. He's you know in that field. He was he was he's younger than those other guys, but to be able to compete, keep your composure, get in that ring for your last attempt, and and put it that close to to moving up is pretty remarkable. He, he told me before he left, Steve, he thought 73. He's going to have to throw 73 if he wants to medal, and it was pretty darn close to what he needed there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, it was, like I said, it was, it was, it was just, you know, you sit there and you're watching it and you're, it's just so cool to, I mean, I know a lot of those athletes, but yeah. you don't have that personal connection with, with them like you do with Peyton. He was, you know, a student athlete for us and just a great person. Um, you know, and I, I mean, if people have been following the Olympics and following Peyton, uh, he got engaged. Yeah. Um, it was yesterday to Maddie. Maddie threw for us as yes. well. So it's pretty cool to see that those two are, make a great couple and they've, uh, you know, they, they there's probably, a lot of track and field talk going on at, the, at their household. <laughs> I was going to say, that's that's a perfect bison union there with Matty Nillis and, and Peyton Otterdahl, two uh, unbelievable athletes that you had the pleasure of coaching during your time here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think it just, yeah, I mean, it, they've been together for quite a while, and Maddie's down there in Nebraska now as an assistant coach. Right. And, you know, it's fun to see her grow and develop as a person and as a coach, and she's going to, you know, continue to do a great job down there, and if she ends up somewhere else someday as well. Is it time now for Krauser to retire? He's won three of these. Let somebody else win this now going forward. <laughs> he just makes it look so easy. It's unbelievable. Though. It's it is unbelievable. And, and you know, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I think when you're, you know, at, at some point you you probably know, hey, it's time to retire. But if you're still competing at a high level <laughs> and you're not having injuries, and but I mean, it, it's a lot of work. I mean, these guys will they'll finish up with some meets probably. And I think Peyton still got some meets yeah. left this season. And then, you know, you, you take some time off, but then it, the grind starts. I mean, they're, they're looking at, you know, he might be looking at the next Olympic games and starting the training and the world championships and things. Do you know, I, if you had this conversation, is Peyton looking at 20, 28? I mean, it's four years. That's a long time, Stevie, but it's also, it's in LA. Yeah. I mean, I would assume so. I haven't talked to Peyton, uh, you know, and, and things, but I think, you know, it's probably soaking up as much as he can this year experience um you know i think he's got a lot of good years ahead of him um you know just the, the key the key is obviously to as you get older the, i think you get smarter in your training yeah. and you know finding ways to stay healthy and you know there's there's a lot of things that he maybe doesn't need to do anymore that he used to do as a younger athlete you know for speed or strength and speed development and things like that it's just maintaining Colbeck and i were mentioning earlier is this an event where you get better with age i know some, track normally that obviously is not the case but the, some field events is that is that the case? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, you know, you see a lot of even even on the track. I mean, you know, kids they get out of college and they're just maybe reaching their peak, and then you know, majority of track and field athletes go on and get a job and start working. And the ones that want to continue to try to try to survive and train, <laughs> continue to do it. So <laughs> I think it's uh, you know, very rarely do you see a really young field event athlete um, in the Olympics. It's just, it's uh, amazing to watch. We, we knew the contenders, and it's so rare in sports where the guys you expect to go to be great are great. That's exactly what happened on Saturday. Yeah. Just a fabulous event. I am curious now, the, we- the rest of the week, what do you keep your eye on? What events do you say, okay, I'm not missing blank over the next couple of days? I mean, I obviously try to catch as much track and field as I can. Um, you know, there's going to be some good events coming up here. The the next, is it six days we have left yeah. for the Olympics? But it's been, you know, it's been really fun. You you forget like just the, the swimming and the gymnastics and all those other sports. I mean, man, it's like the gymnastics, how many days have they been competing? And, you know, I start watching track, you know, and they're good at everything. Yeah. You know, it's the beam, the floor, the bars, the yeah. vault, it's. You know, I'm trying I, as a decathlon or decathlete. I'm like, that's kind of the decathlon, decathlete <laughs> right. gymnastic or swimming. I mean, they they put a lot of, a lot of races in. So, um, you know, it's just it it's fun to watch. And I think you know everybody kind of the Olympics is such a big thing, and you kind of you learn a lot about other sports and the storyline and things. So the decathlon Olympic champion is known as the world's greatest athlete. Give me the the just the. The pressure that comes with that, the notoriety. I mean, I remember the old Reebok commercial, Stevie, with, with Dan O'Brien and Dave, how big yeah. that was. But give us, for people that don't follow track, the Olympic decathlon champion, what comes with that? I mean, I think you're seeing a lot of guys now that are, you know, very, well, obviously very talented. The score was, it was close this year. The top guy, you know, no, I did in the pole vault. Um, 
the and things that they the, the, you know, the defending Olympic champion. So it, it, I wouldn't say it opened the door, but it did a little mm. bit. So I mean, a pretty well-rounded athlete. I mean, um, you know, it's the speed and the power and those guys are, you know, they're running, they're running really fast in the hundred, running good quarters. They can run a 15, they can throw. Um, yeah, it's just kind of come in all shapes and sizes, but it, it's a, it's a unique event. There are two athletes I want to see race this week. Karsten Warholm again in the 400 hurdles and Sydney McLaughlin also in the hurdles as well, because they shattered the world record the last time I have to imagine that it could happen again this week, right? Yeah, I think that those are some some top races that you, know, you want to see. You don't want to miss. They're going to be really good, um, you know. And, and there'll be some other ones that are, you know, there'll be some surprises. Some people come out the two hundred. I mean, I think that's the men's two hundred, the women's two hundred. Those are going to be fun to watch too. Um, you know, like I said, even like the, you know the ten k on the men's side. I mean, you know, to have that many people, you're thirteenth at the Olympic Games and you broke the Olympic record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're so far out of meddling, but you had such a great race. So it, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's there's so many great events. Is that something you brag about? You know, hey, I finished thirteenth, but I did break the Olympic record. Yeah, I think so. I, I would, mean, I would, yeah. I would go to the hill yeah. on that one. There's no doubt uh, in yeah. my mind. Before we go, I was I, you're in a different location. Where are you at here? I, for people who want to know, <laughs> where, where are you at today? So this is the this is the office at the indoor the Shelly Elliott indoor track. Okay, uh, you know when they when we built this building. Oh, 10, 10, 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. Now this was going to be the ticket office, um, you know, and the <laughs> renovation of the Bison Sports Arena, the shack, it turned into the coach's office. Um, so it's a little bit of a lounge for us. Most of our staff spends a lot of their day over here coaching um, and our, our permanent offices are in the shack. So yeah. they get some downtime. Um, we got a couch in here, fridge, microwave. So it's kind of our, I, I guess you can call it our recruiting lounge or break room. How's that? <laughs> Well, it's not. You got an Olympian behind you there with Amanda yeah. Smock, so that works out, right? I mean that yeah. that that that's a pretty good. If you want to bring anybody by, that you can brag about that too. Yeah, so we've kind of you know we've hung up. There's some top ten lists in here. We have some jerseys in here. We have so it's got a you know a lot of neat things. I'll have to try to get a something of Peyton yeah. in here. Amanda did like a autograph ses uh, session at the uh, at Shields, you know, in 2012 yeah. when she came back. That's and, right. Um, I don't know if you remember when we did that triple jump downtown. That's uh, right. That's right. I forgot that. Yes, that, that was fantastic. That, that was really yes. cool. Uh, you know, the people were all all along the runway and cheering for her. She was wearing her, her Olympic uniform. It was, that was awesome. Uh, before I let you go here, since uh, I know fall camp is going for football, volleyball's back, soccer's going. What about for you guys? When do you get start uh, ramping things up here? Yeah, so cross country or report the week before school starts. Yep. Um, you know, you can only have so many days of practice before our first. Uh, <laughs> our first competition. So coach Newell is getting them ramped up and ready to go. I mean, obviously they've been training most of the summer, um, you know, putting in the mileage. It's, you know, one of those, one of those sports where you can do so much on your own, but right. you know, it's, it's nice when you come together with a group, I see the kids in here in the morning, uh, some days getting together and running, um, you know, and then for track and field, we'll get started the first week of school with okay. meetings and captain's practices. And then basically after labor day, we kind of start our preseason. Um, I know it seems early, but it's, it, it's good to be able to control it a little bit because if you're not giving them something to do, you're kind of worried about them going out and, you know, maybe they're spiked up sprinting on the track or doing things they shouldn't <laughs> be doing this early on. So uh, um, have you right joined, have you joined anybody in a run? Have you, he said, you know what? I'm going to go with you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get up early in the morning when it's still dark out and run. So nobody can see me. <laughs> That's smart. I like that plan. It's great to see you, man. Congratulations. I know you guys got to be so pumped uh, on what Peyton did. Thanks so much for the time, bud. Be well, and I'll talk soon, okay? All right, Don. Appreciate it. Thanks. Stevie Keller, NDSU track and field coach, joining us here after a former Bison. Peyton Otterdahl claiming fourth in the Olympic shot put on Saturday in Paris. We'll break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up, get you ready for a busy sports Monday. Hot Mike wraps up after this on WDY Extra. KSFL-TV. And inforum.com.